A NAS, or network-attached storage device, can seem a bit boring. Yeah, it's great for saving and sharing files locally, and it's an easy place to back up your devices. But most NAS devices are capable of so much more. Today, I'm going to take a look at the new DS923 Plus from Synology, dive into some of the coolest things you can do with it, and talk about why you might, or might not, want one. If you've ever watched this channel, you know I'm a pretty big fan of NAS devices, and I use quite a few of them. And yeah, I'm a hobbyist and run a YouTube channel about computer hardware, so that makes sense. However, I think a NAS can make sense for a lot of people, from small business owners, content creators, and even just normal people that may want to take advantage of some of the things they can offer. Heck, even if you're a DIY enthusiast or home labber like myself, you might find one of these useful as well. They can serve quite a few purposes, and I'd like to talk about a few today, most of which I haven't really covered on this channel yet. If you're a fan of the channel, you might be wondering why I'm using a Synology and not a DIY solution. Well, I already have a full video here covering some of the pros and cons of each approach, but to sum it up somewhat, something like this Synology can be much easier to get up and running, especially for a new user, and they typically have more polished software that's designed specifically for the hardware. Speaking of the hardware, let's take a look at this NAS we'll be using today. The DS923 Plus is a 4-bay model that Synology released just a few weeks ago, and unlike many other Synology models, it features the 2-core 4-thread AMD Ryzen R1600, which has a base clock of 2.6GHz and a boost clock of 3.1GHz. It comes with 4GB of DDR4 ECC memory, and can be expanded to up to 32GB if you desire. Alongside the four hot-swappable 3.5-inch drive bays are two NVMe M.2 slots, which can be used for caching or for creating storage pools. On the back below two cooling fans, the DS923 Plus has two gigabit RJ45 ports, an eSATA port for expansion, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, and a network upgrade slot that can be fitted with an optional 10 gigabit ethernet card. There's also the reset button, power port, and Kensington lock, but those are kind of boring. On the front, there are the status LEDs, the power button, and another USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. For storage, I'll be using four of these Toshiba 10TB N300 NAS hard drives that Synology sent over along with the 923 Plus. The overall build quality is very solid, and I'm a fan of the classic Synology look, even if it hasn't changed much over the years. Also, there's something just oh so satisfying about slotting in the drive cages. There's a lot to like about this NAS, like the Ryzen R1600, which while only having two cores and four threads, does pack some horsepower with its higher clock speeds when compared to something like the Intel J4125. The support for PCIe Gen 3 is a really nice bonus, especially if you're looking to take advantage of the NVMe slots. The R1600 is also how the DS923 Plus supports up to 32GB of DDR4 ECC memory, which for some serious users might be a necessity. The R1600 has a major drawback though, and that is the lack of an integrated GPU. Because of this, there's no hardware transcoding support, making this NAS not the best choice when it comes to streaming media. More on that later though. My other big gripe with this NAS is the lack of 2.5 gigabit ethernet out of the box. If it's almost 2023 and you're spending over $600 on a NAS, I feel like it really should come with at least one 2.5 gigabit port, especially when something like the Drive Store 4 from Asus Store exists. It includes 2.5 gigabit networking out of the box and costs less than half of what you'll pay for the 923 Plus, although the Drive Store does like a few features in other areas. But I could seriously take the same four drives I have in this NAS, put them in this NAS, and as long as I have 2.5 gigabit networking, I'm literally going to get over twice the performance at half the cost. That's not a good look. I even tried using USB adapters with the DS923 Plus to get it running on my 2.5 gigabit switch, but it seems like DSM7 doesn't support or include drivers for anything I tried at least. Other than the lack of hardware transcoding and limited networking, there isn't much to complain about with this unit. It's quiet, fast, and efficient. And the DSM software suite is incredibly polished and easy to use. 
Obviously, a NAS like this is a good place to store and back things up, but what else could be done with the 923 Plus or many other Synology devices similar to it? Well, let's check out a few, starting with my favorite, which is using your NAS as an NVR. One of the main uses for my personal Synology device is managing my security cameras. The surveillance station package included with DSM is super simple to set up, manage, and monitor. And it includes support for two cameras out of the box. You do have to pay for licenses to add more than two cameras, but the cost for that is fairly affordable and well worth it in my opinion. Surveillance Station supports a wide range of cameras and you can easily monitor everything either from a web browser or the DS Cam app on your phone. If you're already paying for a NAS like this, you might as well use it for security rather than paying for another cloud-based subscription. Plus, all of the footage is stored locally, meaning you don't have to worry about some shady company having access to your cameras or your footage. Considering some of the things recently coming to light with Eufy cameras, for example, having everything stored locally and only locally is a huge win in my book. I'm a big fan of open source software and DIY solutions, but I've happily used Surveillance Station for two years now and haven't found anything else that I quite like as much or would trust with security. Another great use for a small business or the like is the ability to host your own website. While there are quite a few options for this, one of the easiest is WordPress. If you're looking to host or already pay for WordPress web hosting, you could switch to hosting your website on your Synology and save some more money. The package manager makes it simple to just download the WordPress package and get a draft site up and running in minutes. The built-in process walks you through installing and setting up PHP, MariaDB, and everything else you need. Now, I did run into one issue when trying to route traffic to my WordPress site, at least how I wanted to. I was hoping to run it on a port other than 80 and 443 so that I could do some reverse proxy magic with Nginx, but the default WordPress package only lets you set it up as an alias, which caused some issues with my setup. This might not be a problem for everyone though, and even if it is, there's a really good guide here on setting up WordPress a bit more manually, which opens up a lot more hosting options. Now you might be wondering how someone might actually access your website if it's running on your NAS. I'll talk about dynamic DNS in just a bit, but if you have a registered domain name, there are plenty of guides available to help you set up DNS records and port forwarding to your Synology. If you have a business and a website, you might also want to host your own mail server, which with DSM is completely doable. This was my first time ever setting up an email server, so there were a few bumps in the road, but I sort of managed to get it set up. I was able to receive emails, but ran into an issue of needing a reverse DNS to send emails, which, because I don't have a static IP, wasn't really possible. That's not a Synology issue though, and I imagine setting up a mail server is something that you'll only really want to do if you're running a business, in which case the reverse DNS stuff shouldn't really be a problem. Another easy but useful thing you can do with your Synology is host your own VPN server. Now I'm not going to get deep into explaining VPNs and how they work, but this is essentially a way you can encrypt and route all of your internet traffic through your Synology from wherever you are on the internet. This means A, you're slightly more protected when using the internet in public, and B, you can access any of your services on your local network without having to expose them to the web. So for example, if you're running Surveillance Station and you want to check your cameras while out of town, but don't want to make the Surveillance Station service publicly accessible, you can use your VPN to access your Synology as if you were sitting at your house. Getting this up and running was as easy as installing the VPN server package and setting up DDNS, which is important to do if you don't have a static IP address and domain name. Synology provides you with its own dynamic DNS service, but I decided to take this opportunity to check out another great feature, which is Synology's Docker support. Docker lets you run all sorts of containers, which are sort of like little bundled up applications, that aren't available in the package manager, including this DuckDNS container I've used before in other videos. I created a subdomain on my DuckDNS account, and then used the token to spin up the Docker container, and long story short, now I can always access my home's IP address using that domain, which is important when setting up our VPN. 
The VPN package supports a few different protocols, but I decided on OpenVPN. Setting it up is fairly easy, and I was able to access my home network from a cellular connection in just a few minutes. If you're looking to do something that Synology doesn't have a package for and don't want to use Docker, you can add sources for community-made packages for more options, which is what I did to install Jellyfin. Jellyfin is great for streaming your personal media collection, but when I tried transcoding some 4K footage down to a lower resolution and bitrate, the R1600 was absolutely slammed. This is once again due to the lack of hardware transcoding. Granted, if you use a different Synology model, it most likely has hardware transcoding available, which won't impact performance nearly as much. This is really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what all you can do with a NAS device, because really, a NAS is just a server. If you're on the fence about getting a NAS, maybe watching this video and having a better idea of what all they can do might make you feel just a little bit more comfortable with shelling out the money for one. But what should you get? Well, if you're somewhat of a serious user looking for a decent amount of horsepower, four drive bays, expandability for lots of ECC memory, high-speed NVMe storage, and optional 10 gigabit ethernet, and you don't have a need for media streaming, and also have like $650 to spend, then the 923 Plus is going to be a great fit. However, if you're not as interested in some of those features, want two and a half gigabit ethernet support, hardware transcoding, and want to spend a lot less, my recommendation is still the Drive Store 4 or Drive Store 4 Pro from Ace Store. However, if you'd like to stick in the Synology ecosystem, there are definitely some more budget-friendly options. And you can always go the DIY route, which is way more fun, but lacks the support you get with going with one of the other solutions. I do want to say thanks to Synology for sending this over and making this video possible. And I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned a thing or two in the process. If so, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. That's about it for this one though, so as always, thanks for watching, stay curious, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Docker... Docker...